Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over Section 7.6. So there's not a lot that we that we cover here. We're not covering everything in this section. We just uh, want to cover that kind of the end of Chapter 7. Uh, chapter 7 starts off with going over linear models and average rates of change. Um, we also want you to be able to distinguish on a graph whether you're looking at a line, an exponential graph, which is a which is a curve or a quadratic graph, which is a parabola, like a U-shaped parabola with a vertex. So, just to show you what those are going to look like, this, oops, sorry, what happened there? Excuse me. Um, so, an exponential graph is, this is, a, this is a, an example of exponential growth, where the growth starts off slow and then picks up pace very quickly because it's growing as a percentage of a growing amount. It's kind of like compound interest. So this is um, an example of what an exponential growth function would look like. Exponential decay will look just basically the opposite if you mirror image this. It decreases very quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it starts to flatten out. So um, we'll just use, like, we'll basically ask you a question to identify whether or not you're looking at an exponential graph, a line graph, or a quadratic graph which is a parabola this type of graph so a quadratic graph is one where you see the function looking like y equals ax squared plus bx plus c so you'll see the giveaway as um, having an x squared part an exponential function looks the graph for that looks something like where we have x in the exponent so this is an example where the function has 6 times e to the 12.77 or to the 12.77 times x. So the big thing is, you know, um, an exponential function like this one too has x in the exponent. So now I'm just going to do a couple of examples on a separate sheet here. So let's say that, um, like here, if you go back, that's just um, basically just to show you, like f of x here, this is a linear model because it's, you know, y equals mx plus b. And this is an exponential model because the x is in the exponent. Down here, this is a quadratic function. Anytime you see an x squared and an x part in there, or just basically the x squared part, that makes it a quadratic function, which looks like a parabola, which is that u shape, like I'm showing with the mouse. Okay, so a typical example we'll do is we'll give you a function and we'll give you a graph and we want you to see if you can plug into the function and see if it makes sense for what you're showing on the graph. So what's happening here is that um, x is the input variable, it's the blood alcohol concentration. And as the blood alcohol concentration goes up, then the risk for a car accident should also go up. But what they're saying is it's not linear, it's not directly related like uh, there's not a line, it's basically the more you, the more you drink, the the you get exponentially higher risk of getting in an accident. So that's modeled by this function. So we're never to get, never going to ask you to come up with the function. We're just going to ask you to use it. So it's telling you x is the blood alcohol concentration, and r is the risk. So if I plug in a various blood blood alcohol concentration, I should be able to get my risk. So this one, that's what this question asks. What's the risk of a car accident with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08? So I'll show you how you type this in the calculator. We gotta type, let me kind of try and show the function here when I type it in. We're gonna type six times, and then we gotta get this E. This is not a variable, this is a number. This is a constant number, it's the, called the exponential growth constant. So to find that on your calculators, you'll see an LN button. So to get the E, you press second and the LN button, and that's the same for nearly every calculator. Then in the exponent, we have 12.77 times X. So I'm just gonna do a parenthesis for this exponent, even though this calculator doesn't necessarily need it, but some calculators do. So it's if you're gonna do two things in an exponent, it's probably a good idea to do parentheses for it. So I'm gonna do blood alcohol concentration of 0.08, instead of, that's what I'm plugging in for X. And so my risk is about 16.7%. So I would say my risk is about 16.7%.
Now let's look and match that up with the graph of the if we plug that in correctly. So if we look at a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08, that should be kind of right here before the 0.10. Now if we look up at the risk, that's below 20, maybe about right about where we are at, 16, 17%. So it looks like this matches the figure and the graph. I'll just do another one real quick. Just say like, let's say we did, I don't know, I'm looking at like 0.15 alcohol concentration. It looks like about a 40% risk. So let's just see if that matches up. So if I do six times second LN to get the E, and then I'm gonna do parenthesis 12.77 times 0.15 blood alcohol concentration, I get a risk of 40.74%. 40, 40 so the graph isn't like showing it perfectly, but it's right at 40%. So it's looking like that's matching. Okay, then let's show how to use a quadratic function. So let's say here we have the function f of x is negative 0.01 times x squared plus 0.18 times x plus 2. Models the football's height, which is f of x in feet, in terms of its horizontal distance x in feet. So x is the horizontal distance that we plug in, and then that will give us a vertical distance, a height, um, f of x. So how far would the how far would the nearest defensive player who is six feet from the kicker's point of impact have uh, needed to reach to block the punt? So he's like saying you're six feet away. Um, how far like how far would that be if you, if you if you're standing six feet away? How far do you need to reach or how far or how high is the ball at that point? So we're just gonna plug that in. So we're gonna do um, let me clear out the calculator here. We're going to do a negative 0 0.01 times um, 6 feet. So 6 is our x. We're going to square that. All right, arrow out of that. Okay, and then I'm going to do plus 1.18 times 6 plus 2. So that's the function. Plug that all in in one line. I get 8.72 feet. So I would need to be 8.72 feet tall or reach 8.72 feet in order to, to touch that ball when I'm six feet away. So just some examples on how you're going to plug into the functions and kind of match that up with a graph. We don't have a graph for this one. That's typically what I'm going to do. So I'm going to expect you to know if you're looking at an exponential growth curve or DK curve, a parabola, which is just a uh, you know a U-shaped graph or a line, and then be able to use each function to, to get some predicted values. So that's it. We'll see you next time.